say there's something there uh, regarding when you explain Buddhism to other people. Okay, when you talk about the teaching, is quite easy to explain. But when you talk about people in the realms of existence, and people ask you this question, how do you know this? In the first, if you want to explain that, uh, How do explain that? okay. The first thing uh, to try to show them uh, is that this world uh, is not as real and as solid as we think it is. Uh. It is more like a dream world. Uh. Because if you ask him, okay, how you know the world exists? He say, I can see, uh, I can hear, and all these things. And then we believe our eyes yeah? Yeah. and that our eyes see but actually it is not our eyes that see because you tell him when you go to sleep you are not using your eyes yeah? but when you dream another world appears without your eyes right? which proves yeah, that the world is created by consciousness yeah? in your dream state so in the same way now the world is created by consciousness Okay, yeah. so if the world is created by consciousness ah yeah? uh, that shows uh, that whatever you can think of uh, at that time uh, when you are actually dreaming, uh, it appears real to you. Uh, right? Uh, so, you can give, for example, when people are, are dying, uh, a few days before they actually die, uh, another world. Uh, another state of altered consciousness uh, appears to them, you know, and they start to see another world. It's good if it's a good world, uh, but some people, uh, they see themselves like one, I was told by some devotee in Singapore, their friend uh, was dying of cancer. A few days before she died, uh, she was crying, I said, why am I all tied up in chains? Mm -hmm. So myself tied up in iron chains. Uh, so... So, okay, so in that state, uh, why does he see this world? And why, why does other people don't see the chains around her? It's the mind. Mm. So if a person is, let's uh, say, Lao Ching, he behaves like an animal, then it's natural that he will dream of himself as an animal. And then also now science uh, is using hypnotism uh, uh, to make us regress and see our past lives. Here we can read books, we can prove that we have a lot of studies. But talking about the animal realm, the hell realm, you know, the heavenly realm, that one is very difficult to prove. Uh, animal realm we can see. Uh, yeah, but how do you know, you know, as a human, how do you convert into become animal? <laughs> yeah. how, how do you know that you're going to be an animal? Yeah. Uh, you, of course, uh, very hard to convince. Yeah, but you, you one being, uh, you, you, to, to see uh, like certain uh, animals uh, and nature, uh, some of them, uh, they have certain human characteristics. Not cats and dogs. Mm. Mm. You see, uh, last time my grandmother lived near an abattoir uh, where they slaughter cows. You know, and she saw how uh, they lead these cows to the slaughter. This cow will not want to go, you know. So when they pull, uh, they go down on the and front legs go down and they cry. How come the cow can cry? <laughs> cow can cry like human being, but some human beings don't have cow sense. <laughs> Sometimes you see in the papers, uh, some dog uh, it even dies trying to rescue some other being.
<laughs> but now like ghosts uh, are saying Westerners they don't believe in ghosts now they start to believe in Westerners I would think the ghosts are everywhere. <laughs> I know of a case, huh? uh, somebody in Ipoh told me the cousin is married and staying in New Zealand. So they decided one day uh, to remove all the wallpaper and put up new wallpaper. So when they started removing the wallpaper, uh, that night the ghost disturbed them. Apparently, some of the ghosts stay in the <laughs> paper. Uh, and I know another case uh, when I was young. Uh, as this uh, man in our kampung. Uh, he stayed in a certain house and the ghosts would always come and disturb him at night. Uh, and he was quite brief. Uh, he's not afraid. He tried to fight with the ghost. Uh, and every night, the ghost disturbed him until he was so fed up, he decided... He used a trick now one day. So he went to sleep now with a lot of powder in his hand, you know. So when the ghost came to disturb him, he threw the powder on the ghost. Then the ghost ran away. And the next morning he went to look for the powder. He found uh, the powder sticking on the wall. So he nailed the wall uh, after that, uh, never disturbed him anymore. <laughs> And then uh, I, I, I had a friend, he found an umbrella when I was a layman. He found an umbrella at the roadside, you know. So he took the umbrella home. Ah, that night onwards, I got disturbed by some spirit. You know. after, two, after a few nights, uh, then he started wondering why. Then he remembered the umbrella, threw away the umbrella, no more disturbed. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I know uh, Mayana Mang. Uh, I was disturbed because of all this, all this thing. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I also know of another uh, family. Uh, they bought an old Buddha statue to keep in the house and pray. Uh. And the uh, lady, uh, sometimes when she prayed, uh, she seemed to see two red eyes looking at her uh, in the statue. And from the moment they brought back the, the statue to the house, uh, the house uh, became, I mean, a lot of disturbance. Uh, the parents quarrel with the children, uh, husband and wife quarrel and all these things. And until after several months, uh, the husband and wife uh, discussed this problem. Uh, then they thought something wrong with the Buddha statue. And they took it to a bridge huh, and threw it over into the river. And after that, the house became more peaceful. <laughs> so don't think uh, all these Buddha statues all will protect you. <laughs> the best tanka is inside, not outside. <laughs>